what's going on guys JS cards here coming at you with a Yu-Gi-Oh deck profile uh, this time we're doing it on EDO Pro because I have some gameplay footage to show at the end of this video as well and today we're gonna be talking about charmers so I did just open up the charmer structure deck on my channel earlier this week and like I kind of talked about in that video I'm gonna be doing an EDO Pro version video today and then a physical deck profile towards the end of this week maybe over the weekend or next monday just kind of depends but um i like to do these because i like to actually show the gameplay and there's some pretty funny and awkward situations that you'll see at the end of the video um this deck isn't like the greatest but we got some cool wins and it is very fun. I will say that I do like that it's kind of a control deck in a way. Um, you're just getting your spell casters out there, especially having your secret village out on the field to stop any annoying spell cards. And then it, of course, if you can get into your, your bigger link monsters, that always helps. But this is a fun deck if you're on a budget or if you're new or you're wanting to learn the game, uh, that type of thing. I think this is a good start for you. Now, there are better structure decks to buy three of and play, but um, this is still a good one. And I do like the Charmers. Their artwork's great. Their bright colors are great. Uh, it's a very pretty deck, I'll say that. But... Um, Let's jump into this deck profile and then we'll go over the replays and you guys can see the deck in action. Also, quick note, when I do the physical card deck profile as well, it's going to be this exact list. I don't think anything's going to be changing. Um, so a lot of these cards are budget and this is a great overall budget deck and you can... Uh, bump it up and make it more expensive if you want to or if you have some of the cards already like that but this will kind of get you going in the right direction I think. So starting off with our monsters though we have two area and two Ausa. I don't know how to say her name uh, one Hita and one Win. So the water and the earth types I played two of because they're like the better ones, but I do like having all four of them available. Uh, then three copies of Fairy Tale Luna. This card's really good. Uh, it lets you search out any of your familiar possessed and uh, of course, it's got that bounce effect, which can come in handy. Then for their familiars, I play three copies of Gigabyte and three copies of Nefarious Archfiend. So both of these cards are great for just being able to get an extra body out onto the field, and then you can go into a rank four or a link two or something like that. And then to go along with those, I play two copies of the Awakening of the Possessed. Um, these are nice just kind of beefier boss monsters uh 2000 attack it's nice because i have the one miss star boy in the extra deck because you can really boost up your water types so uh your area gets stronger your awakening of the possessed uh gets stronger and even your gigabyte for hand traps, just three copies of Effect Veilers. This is where if you want to put more money into the deck, you can. Even something on the low end like DD Crows or even Ash Blossoms. You don't have to go crazy with like impermanences, but you could if you wanted, definitely. Um, but these Effect Veilers are also in the Structure deck. So if you pick up three of the Structure decks, uh, you'll be set. A lot of these cards are in the Structure deck with the exception, of course, of the entire extra deck. And then the Solemn Strikes, Monster Reborn, Harpy's Feather, uh, Called by the Grave, and then the, uh, the Water Awakening of the Possessed. But everything else is in the structure deck, which is awesome. Uh, for the spells, though, three copies of Spirit Charmers. There's different names for some of these cards on EDO Pro. I don't know if it's like the Japanese translations, maybe, but um, I'm going by their English name. So we have Spirit Charmers. This card saved me a few times. So you can discard one card, take 
two cards from your deck with different names of each other that are charmer monsters, familiar possessed monsters, or possessed spells and traps. And then you can add one of them into your, into your hand, and then you can set the other one. So this is great if you want to just try to get like another um, a charmer out onto the field, or um, if you need to search for one of your spells or traps, you can just set it right away. So uh, this card's nice just to search out whatever you might need, and then the other one gets added to your hand, which is nice. For the field spells, I play two copies of Grand Spiritual Art Ichirin and one Secret Village. Um, Grand Spiritual Art is really good because it has that mandatory negate effect, but honestly, uh, you'll see in some of the replays too, Secret Village was actually more clutch in a lot of matches because there's some annoying spell cards out there, and as long as you control a spellcaster monster, your opponent cannot activate spells. Then of course we have the one terraforming to search those out, Monster Reborn, because it's Monster Reborn, uh, Called by the Grave, just to be able to stop a hand trap if we're able to, and one Harpy's Feather Duster back row does hurt this deck. For the trap cards, uh, three copies of Possessed Partnerships. Um, I saw this card a lot, almost too much. I am considering cutting it down to two, but for right now we have three. Two copies of Unpossessed. I love this card. It boosts up your um, familiar possessed monsters. They can't be destroyed by battle. On top of that, it lets you bring out one of your charmers if a monster is destroyed by battle or card effect. And then for the last trap card, three copies of Solemn Strike. You could play Solemn Warnings if you wanted to because those are included in the structure decks. I just like Solemn Strike a little bit more personally. Um, and you can get those in the Machina structure deck as commons or if you pick them up like by singles, I think they're like maybe two dollars each so very affordable solemn strike is just a great classic trap card for the extra deck we have one of each of the um charmer link monsters just one of each is nice they're all great link twos one miss Starboy because your area your water is like the most important one and uh i don't know i just like having it in there to boost up your water monsters one uh, Ningirsu because it is an out to Dragoon, which can definitely come in handy. After that, Nightmare Cerberus and Nightmare Phoenix. And for our boss monsters, we have Borlo, Dragon, and the Unchained Abomination. I have gone into Borlo a lot. It is very nice to have, and your opponent sometimes doesn't really expect it. And then when you do bring it out, they can't really do anything to it, which is... Kind of nice, <laughs> kind of funny. Uh, for our Exceeds, we do play some Exceeds. I've seen some builds that play almost all Link monsters, but uh, these Exceeds are good, and it's really easy to get two level fours out right away, especially with your familiar cards. So uh, that's why I'm playing Tornado Dragon, Abyss Dweller, Perform Mage, Trapeze Magician, which is nice because it is a spellcaster. And then, honestly, the two best cards here. I won most of my games thanks to number 39 and then going into Utopia the Lightning. This is by far the MVP of the deck along with Borolode. Um, yeah, if you can just get one of those out, much less both of them, you're going to be sitting pretty good. Your opponent can actually really struggle against both of those um yeah utopia the lightning's great and it's budget too because um it was just reprinted in the maximum gold set so that's it for the profile part of this video this deck is very fun it's a great budget and casual option for people next up will be some replays that you guys can watch and kind of see how the deck works and hopefully you find it interesting and helpful if you enjoy it, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more. Stay tuned for more Yu-Gi-Oh! news, deck profiles, and opening videos, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.